Bob Nagy here with Green Power Videos. I thought I'd teach you everything you need to know about how to drive the 2010 Prius for maximum gas mileage. Pulse and Glide, Super Highway Mode, Stealth Glide, you may have heard of these terms, but let's teach you everything you need to know now in this quick video. So let's get started. The hybrid system indicator is the display that shows you how you're driving the Prius, and that's where we'll get our information to learn how to drive the Prius for high mileage. As you accelerate, the first part of the display lights up, coming up to the center line, and that's the EV, or electric drive, area. Now in some cases, when the motor's cold, the gas motor will be on in this area, but most times, it will be on full electric drive. The area above the center line is the gas engine drive area, or ICE area. When you accelerate past that center line, your gas engine is going to come on and your mileage will reduce. The 2010 Prius is designed so the average driver can get 50 miles a gallon without any special driving techniques, and with special driving techniques, you can easily get 60 miles a gallon. You need to know that in winter, your miles per gallon are going to be less, because winter gas formulations result in a little less miles per gallon. Plus, snow, rain, and wind increase friction on the car and help to reduce mileage. Plus, your main drive battery works less efficiently in cold temperatures. It really likes to be in the summer temperatures. Well, let's answer the question, why drive for higher mileage on the Prius? First, it lowers the wear on your internal combustion gas engine, extending the life of your vehicle. It saves you up to 20% more on gasoline bills, one of the main reasons you bought the Prius. At slightly slower speeds, you're going to have increased safety if you do have a problem, and you can have up to 20% lower carbon emissions. Let's start with our most important driving technique, pulse and glide. The glide part of Pulse and Glide means coasting, and the 2010 Prius is a great coaster because it has extremely low wind drag, 0.25. The high pressure in the tires also improves coasting with less friction, and the vehicle's heavy for its size because of the batteries and extra motors, and it has a lot of inertia, so it coasts very well. First, we pulse or accelerate fairly rapidly up to the desired speed, considering the traffic conditions. If there's nobody around you, take it slower. If you need to go with traffic, well, you can use the power range or whatever you need to get up to your desired speed. But the slower the pulse or acceleration, the better for your mile per gallon. Once we attain our desired speed, we have three options. The first is glide, as in our pulse and glide. So, we first get up to the speed we want to go with the pulse, and then we pull off the accelerator fully, and then press it slightly until your HSI indicator is in the coasting position. And here's where you want to be on your HSI indicator. Just a little bit of green showing in there or nothing at all. Try to get nothing on the display and that means you're coasting. You're not using either gas or electric power. Stay within that first little wedge. Well, when can we use our first choice, the two pulse and glide coasting? Number one, when you're on a moderate road decline and the car is able to maintain its speed when you go into the coast. You'll get a feel for how much decline you need for that to work. Number two, when you're getting off the expressway and you see that exit ramp and you've got a good way ahead of you, the sooner you can start coasting, the more your mileage will start to go up. And number three, when no other cars are around and you know you're going to be slowing down anyway, there's a light far ahead, and you can afford to gently slow down and coast using no energy. Your second choice is full EV driving. If your speed limit is under 41 miles an hour, get up to speed rapidly and then redepress the pedal just enough to keep the car going the desired speed. And the HSI indicator will be in the lower half of the display. At this point, you're going to see your instantaneous gas mileage display go up to 100 miles per gallon. You're always going to see 100 miles per gallon when you're in full electric mode, and this really raises your average miles per gallon up. Because the batteries are not that large in the 2010 Prius, they don't really have the ability to pull the car around with any commanding power. So you want to avoid going up near the line because you don't really get a lot more pulling power at that level. If you're on level ground or a slight decline, you'll be very surprised to find if you just back off the pedal a little bit, you'll still be able to keep your speed up and save batteries. The third situation is where your required speed is over 41 miles an hour. So accelerate up to your target speed and then pull off gently to the center line and redepress the pedal just enough to keep your speed constant. This is about what you can expect to get when driving in the efficient gas area at highway speeds. And here's how to find that efficient area. What you need to know is that this upper second half of the bar is the gas engine operating range and the gas engine 
operates most effectively and efficiently within about a quarter inch from the center line to about a quarter inch under the power range area at the top. And this corresponds to about 1200 RPM to 2100 RPM on the gas engine. Now this corresponds to about 50 miles an hour on the low side to 65 miles an hour on the high side depending on conditions. So as conditions change and the grade goes up and down, you're going to learn how to use the absolute least amount of pedal depression in order to keep your car going at the desired speed. The position just above the center line can only be used when you're driving just under 50 miles an hour and there's a gentle decline in the road because not much engine power is being produced. Now let's talk about optimum braking techniques on the Prius. The first thing to know is your actual friction brakes do not engage until the display's charge indicator on the left is fully lit. This is when you're depressing the brake pedal fairly hard. At any time that the brake pedal is being depressed and the charge indicator is partially filled, you're stopping fully by the regenerative braking system. Your real brakes are not yet being used and you are making electrical power, which is desirable. Here's the first braking situation. You're going to make a right turn in a thousand feet and nobody's in back of you. Slowly apply the brakes way before the turn and then slightly increase them when you're going to make the turn. You'll never actually engage your real friction brakes. Now braking situation two is with an upcoming light, say a thousand or fifteen hundred feet away, and you've got nobody in back of you. Clear sailing. So go ahead and pull your foot off the accelerator and go into glide for a short period. With your foot completely off the brake pedal, you won't be in a complete coast. You'll be making a little electricity. Then depress the brake pedal slightly well in advance of the light, and you'll see your charge indicator start to fill going to the left. Try to do a nice long gentle stop, and then only depress the pedal fully right when you're coming to a full stop. So let's review our good braking guidelines. Brake well in advance, gently, so as to get a nice long charge on those batteries and glide whenever possible before having to stop with the brakes. Now let's talk about optimum driving techniques, driving through hills and valleys, or the grades you'd find on any typical roads. And here's our road with the hill ahead and we're driving from left to right. So at this point in the hill you'd accelerate slightly in anticipation of having to climb the hill and allow yourself to slow slightly as you go up the hill. As you approach the crest of the hill, pull back slowly on the accelerator and just try to maintain your speed with minimum pedal depression. As soon as you start the decline, pull off the pedal fully and then depress it slightly to go into a glide. If you speed up too much, you can take your foot off the pedal and that will slow you down slightly. Then, when you're back on the flat road again, put yourself into that sweet spot area on the upper ICE range according to your desired cruising speed. Now let's talk about our driving mode buttons. Well, the mode buttons mostly change the way the accelerator pedal responds to you depressing it. EV is full electric drive mode, and it's used for parking lots and quiet driving at very slow speeds. Eco gives a very slow response to the pedal, and it helps the AC work a little bit more efficiently. Power gives strong acceleration for times when you're in heavy and or fast traffic. Realize there's a fourth mode, and that's all buttons off. That's normal driving mode for average pedal response. My suggestions are to use normal or eco mode for in-town driving, but use eco mode for highway driving because it gives a more comfortable foot position at cruising speeds. The climate control in the car uses energy and it does decrease mileage, so we can minimize the heater energy usage in winter using a pulse and glide technique for using it. First, go ahead and turn the fan on to engage the heater and bring the fan up to a nice high speed. But set your temperature all the way up to high all the way to the highest temperature with the airflow coming through. And then when the cabin reaches temperature, you can shut the system off and at anything over 45 degrees, the airflow through the cabin will keep the car warm. And the number one most important thing for good mileage is tire inflation. Check them often. High mileage experts on the Prius normally overinflate their tires by three to four pounds. And of course, that's your option to try if you want to go for higher mileage. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video on the 2010 Prius and learned a lot. If you're interested in other green topics like how to install solar energy in your house, I like to teach those as well. So check out our website at greenpowervideos.com. And until next time, take care.